I'm really, really big on. I'm big on friends and family and, and loyalty, and I always have been. That's not something I'm going to ever change. If, if I'm cool with you, I'm cool with you. If I'm not, I'm not cool with you. But that don't mean I'm going to be nasty to you. That doesn't mean that I'm going to put you on blast or say anything. But trust me, if you try to uh, put me on blast, I may not say anything right away. You keep pushing me, and you push me in a corner. I'm going to say everything, period, point blank. I think my thought of the day, or the mukbang of the day, breakfast bang, is friendship. Friendship is a real funny thing. It's similar to love. How you love and how you're a friend is your individual definition and is different from everybody else. I think with me, my idea of friendship has always been, I'm gonna treat you the way I wanna be treated. And if you're like me, I'm not gonna do more for you than I would do for myself. Basically, I'm treating you like I would treat me. Friends go through, just like love, Breakups and makeups, if that makes sense. Ooh, it's too bright. Breakups and makeups. And if you're lucky enough and your friendship is really based on something, you will stand the test of time. If you're lucky enough, like me, I actually have some friends that, shoot, will probably carry me on until death. We will be friends in this life and the next, I hope. I hope I'm lucky enough. Then again, the question is, do I want to see the next life? This one is already interesting enough. But, yeah. I don't think all the time you get to choose your friends. And sometimes I truly believe that some people are friends for a lifetime, if you're friends for the right reasons. Others come for a season or just a moment in time to help you help yourself or help you figure out some things. Just like the universe is good for giving you what you ask for, but not the way you ask for it. You know, my, my grandmother used to say all the time, don't ask for patience because you'll get a storm. You don't get patience. You get the storm to learn to develop the patience. Just like with people, sometimes people come around and you think, well, why did this happen? Why did that happen? Why did you become my friend? And why are you no longer my friend? And you got to keep in mind that maybe it was something you were supposed to learn from them. Maybe it was, you know, they were supposed to teach you how to do this or how to do that or sharpen you in some kind of other way. And they weren't meant to be there. And hey, that, that, that's okay. Just because somebody's not meant to be there doesn't mean that you don't wish them well or wish the best for them. You know, I mean, I have plenty of people that I'm no longer friends with or plenty of people that I'm friends with and I still wish them the best. I hope everything turns out well for you and everything is great. And I think that's the thing about us as people and humans. Sometimes we're so busy thinking about, oh my God, you're doing this, you're doing that, I can't do that. Instead of thinking, oh my God, I'm happy for you. You know, what can I do over here myself to make me a better me like you made you a better you? Too busy we're thinking about what we don't have, what we can't accomplish, what we can't do. Sometimes instead of thinking about what you can't do, we should think about what if, what can I do? Even if you fall a hundred million times, at least you tried. That makes you more spectacular than anybody else because you had that thing inside of you to try. You know, I know a lot of my um, my close friends keep saying to me, oh my God, you know, you should do the videos. I've been telling you for a long time, do this, do that, do something that shows your creativity. And I know the people behind the scenes are really the ones that hold me together. It's always been that way, you know. Even when I was a teenager and I was little, sometimes I would be so confused and so upset and so hurt 
behind certain things, you know? If it wasn't for my close friends saying, hey, don't worry about it, or having a different outlet, you know, at that point being school or whatever, if I didn't have those things, I would have lost me. I really would have. And I appreciate my friends for that and the death of, of parents. You know, we, we've gone through that together. I appreciate them. Those are the things that bond us. Those are the commonalities. Our personality, our hearts, our intelligence, th intel uh, intelligence. Those are the things that bond us together as friends. And I appreciate that. Even with some of the newer people I've met that have become my newer friends, there's still nothing like the things, the places, and the people that that ground me. I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. I, I love that, and I wish everybody who can hear me can at least identify, you know, hey, a couple of friends or things that really ground them to be in them because that, that, that's the most important thing at the end of the day in, in any endeavor that you take. You need to make sure that something grounds you, something keeps you to being normal, whatever you define your normalcy as. Um, I appreciate them. I was talking to a friend of mine this morning. I know I love, I, okay, sidebar. I love cereal, but the only way I can eat cereal is either dry or I have to have very vanilla soy. Keep that in mind. Very vanilla soy is really good. I just can't have too much of it because it'll give me titties. But anyway, um, yeah, so I was talking to a really good friend of mine and she just, you know, keeps pushing me, keeps pushing me, keeps but not in a bad way, not not in a bad way, you know. Um, friends, like, just like significant others, you know, they should always sharpen you and, and inspire you to aspire to be better, you know. I get it. Nobody can make you want to do anything that you don't want to do. That That's a given, you know. But I think when you kind of look at yourself and realize what you're good at and what you're not doing, then you tr then you should try to take some of those other opinions into consideration and try to open up your mind to new experiences and possibilities. Not so much the, oh my God, I'm scared, because trust me, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be any good at this. And that is a valid thing. The not knowing can kind of scare you more than anything else. It's just like, like I was telling a friend of mine, it was it's just like, if I have to go to a job interview, I don't like being interviewed. I don't like being grilled because it's like, okay, I got to be fake. I got to be false. I don't know what the hell is going on. So I'm playing a damn role. I'm, I'm not cool with that. I'm not, you know, so even with this whole thing and my friends and my friendships kind of holding me together and, and making me really want to go for it and do things, then I start to open up my mind and say, okay, well, I love the video editing. Like I've said before, you know, I really, really love it. I, I do, you know, I didn't think that I was going to like it at first because when I asked someone about video editing, um, all they ever told me was, hey, why don't you go ahead and look at a YouTube video? I'm sorry, that's not really helpful. You can look at things and learn things, but unless you have the hands-on experience to try it or someone there to kind of show you, even if it's fast, it's just like, okay, you kind of need a little bit of both. You know, you need more encouragement than go watch a video. I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not doing that. And, you know, I mean, I did, and I had some really two close friends of mine um, come back and tell me, hey, try this, try that. And then when you try this, try this over here, try this over here. You know, especially my one good girlfriend, she, you know, she's very creative, very artsy. I, I love her to death. I've always said, she's the female equivalent to me. I freaking love her, you know, as far as creativity. You know, just try different things, try this, try that. And she's been really helpful along the way. And my other homeboy, he's been very, very helpful. You know, I ask him questions about, um, lighting, this and that. And I ask her the same thing, you know, so they've been really helpful putting stuff in my mind. I've been watching a lot of videos. Um, but back to the whole a friendship thing, you know, it's just kind of like, I appreciate the people that are here in my life. I love them with everything in me and I will never let them go. They will be the main driving force that always holds me together and keeps me grounded. The people that have come in and gone, I'm not mad at that. You know, I appreciate you for coming and, and especially for leaving you know you brought something we achieved something it's gone it's time for another chapter you know um there are just so many things behind the scenes that i'm pushing myself to do outside of this dirty house my house has been in a disarray if you can see the pictures there'll be like pop-ups pop pop see pictures my house is is a mess my mind is a mess um but today you know behind the encouragement of a 
good friend, a good girlfriend, and a couple of other friends, a few family members. Um, I actually went out and I don't know why I did it. I mean, because I, I, I like the recording, but it's just hard to do it on an iPad because it's like, it doesn't stand up. It doesn't do this. It doesn't do that. You know, and I don't use this iPad for anything outside of recording the videos, maybe, maybe playing music on it to stream it to one of my devices. But, um, and I actually told my mom I would give her the iPad. She hasn't come back and said anything. I'm like, girl, it's a brand new iPad. Take it. I pay for the line of service. Girl, take it. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I bought a camera. I already have headphones. I'll probably get some more to do more editing, stuff like that. So I bought a camera and all this other stuff so I could film. And my best friend is like, film every day. Do a lot of filming. And, and I've read that too, you know, and I've seen that different places. The only way to get better at what you do is to go ahead and do it more often, develop your eye, do this, do that, you know. So just getting used to that. And like I said, going back to friends, if it wasn't for them, even with me being here, I haven't been home and LA will always be home. I haven't been home for like seven years, eight years. I talk to my mom every single day, you know, but I just haven't been home in all that time. And when I first moved away, the hardest thing was always holidays. You know, I'm used to being in a five mile radius from my family and my friends. I'm used to holidays being family and friends. So to be gone, the first year when I was gone, you know, it's like every holiday, you know, even though I had a boyfriend, then he and his mom would invite me places. No, I don't want to. You're not family. I mean, I love you. I'm in love with you. But how? How do you move yourself away from all of that and everything you know, and now you're expected to adjust and, and do things with these people and that people, and, you know, so it wasn't easy for me. Then I had a, um, a girlfriend that actually lived in the area, not in the area, but nearby. Um, and this all goes back to friendship. She lived nearby and I had met her, her and her cousin three years prior. And we got along so well. She had always said, you know, when she left LA, if you ever come to the DMV, hey, you got family. So I wound up moving there with my dude, like I said, um, and she was amazing. She and her cousin um, took me to church. You know, there was not a time I got to be really lonely. And, and the times I did have that were really sad when he and I were going through it. My girlfriend was, you know, my, my homegirl, she was a lifesaver. She was amazing. I've always said that I have very, I'm, I'm blessed to have the friends that I do, but she is an angel. Everything that I've seen her do, some people say that they're Christian, whatever. They don't practice what they preach. She actually does. And I've always truly felt like, especially with her, I always think about that movie. Um, oh God, the one with Morgan Freeman. I can't think of the name of the, da the doggone movie. But it's, um, what is it, where he said, you can see the face of God in, in the things around you, basically. And so it's funny to me because I've seen her do so many things. I don't even see her as her anymore. I see her as this angel or something out of this world. I still know that she goes through pain. She goes through her own individual things. But she's so nice and loving and caring. That's just through and through. That's just through her spirit and everything, you know. Um, but anyway, yeah, she and her cousin were totally amazing to me. Would take me places, do things, keep my spirits up. That really helped. That that was true friendship. It still is. We're still, we all still talk to this day and we're all really good friends. Um... When I moved to Atlanta, I wasn't going to move here. Um, I had actually spent a year and a half in the DMV, and then I moved here. And my best friend, actually, my best friend, um, who I've been friends with for many, many years since high school, she actually convinced me to move here. I moved here. She hated it so bad. She broke her lease, quit her job, left. You know, but even the time that she was here, she just, when I tell you, really kept me going, really kept me going. Um... She would invite me over to her house. You know, I didn't worry about holidays or anything like that. Not to say that I didn't have some um, people here that are like family to me, you know, but it was great to be around somebody who has known you forever in a day, who can just help you, keep you together, make you laugh, and you have inside jokes. There's nothing better than that. That, that to me, is the best part of friendship. You go through experiences, but you have a lot of great memories. You have a lot of bad memories, but you can laugh and, and live through all of it if you have enough great people around you with a really, really basic bond that's that's built on something. Um, so she wound up leaving and then um, I have two other <laughs> good friends here and um, both of them, they're, they're really wonderful. You know, 
One of them, she and I used to have coffee together all the time. I may not see her all the time, <laughs> but she still has great thoughts. And then when I do see her, it's always fun. You know, um, I have another girlfriend I just met, not, not that long ago, but you know, she's really nice and, and caring and you know, she and her girlfriend are both nice. Um, my other girlfriend that lives here, she's going through some stuff, but you know, hey, she's really nice. So it, it just comes down to the character of your heart, the content of your character, your spirit. Sometimes you gravitate toward people that are like you. I've always said my friends are a direct reflection and personification of my heart. Everything that I am, they are the living breath of that. My one girlfriend is very creative. That's every part of me. You know, my other, my other girlfriend is very business-minded. Hell, I'm a workaholic, so, you know, I'm pretty much the same. It's just, I appreciate them. I appreciate the friends that I have, and I always say, I don't let a day go by, whether it's a friendship or whether it's um, a family member. If I care about you, there's not going to be a question in your mind or my mind how I felt about you. If I like you, if I love you, if I don't mess with you, you know, if I, if I have nothing to do with you, you don't have to question that with idiots. Just like in real life, if you say something stupid to me, I'm going to give you the face. I don't have time for it. I'm sorry. I had to eat. Mm -mm. Sitting up in here in my robe looking like a woman of leisure. Um, I always pride myself in the people that are behind me because you don't see them. I go through a lot of stuff, just like everybody here goes through a lot of stuff. And sometimes we're not always lucky enough to be able to talk to our friends about our problems. I at least can talk to my friends about my problems. And um, if I need to, I write, you know, uh, burn incense, take a shower, not a, not a shower, a bubble bath, always a bubble bath. Um, but yeah, they actually keep me going on and I love them and they're pushing me to open my mind to new things and do what I want to do. Like Sometimes we don't look at what our signs are or what the universe has given us to be better. Sometimes removing you from a job, you may think, well, damn, I got bills, I got this, I got that. What am I going to do? Instead of thinking, oh, thank God, I didn't see how I was stressed out. I didn't see how I was coming into work upset. My blood pressure was elevated. Sometimes we don't see what is actually a blessing sometimes fear can be a blessing you know fear can push you to do a whole lot of things and and sometimes you don't want to hear the people who have the best intentions at heart for you because you're scared and i get that you know because even in like i said even in trying to do this and and that it was never really a thought in my mind and the reason it wasn't a thought in my mind is because I'm just used to working jobs and, and feeling like it's okay to be abused. Throwing myself into it, working mindless hours, being stressed, being upset, going to bed, can't sleep. I thought, seriously, and I'm not even gonna lie, I seriously thought, that's what you do as a grown person. You don't really complain, you just sit there and take it. And you get the abuse, and you're okay with it. You find, you, you, buy, you justify it by saying, well, I got rent, I got bills. No, sometimes it's not okay. It's not okay to allow anyone to abuse you or anyone al to allow you to lose your inner light. And that's something that I have to remember. I have to remind that uh, to myself daily. You know, and, and like I said, especially with my friends, we all identify because in a lot of ways, we're all the same. We're all workaholics. We all do everything we need to do. And we all have, we all periodically give each other praise. Like, girl, I see you. You know, we all do that and just... Having people constantly say, you know, um, yeah, you could do this, you could do that. You know, like I said, a few of my friends, oh my God, you're so funny. Eh. You know, even my coworker, she says it. Um, and I don't try to be anybody other than me. I always tell you, I'm going to be real honest, even at the cost of me. I don't care. I don't care. I will always wear the white hat. I will always fight. I will fight for what's right. Even if it, even if I get my, my arm chopped off or something of that nature. But, um... Yeah, I appreciate my friends. I love my friends. Um, anybody who has a really good friend, I would suggest that you always... I'm not saying you got to tell them daily, because uh, then you're going to sound like Al B. Shore singing, I can tell you how I feel about you night and day. That's a stalker song, by the way. I don't care what nobody say. That is the original stalker song, okay? But, um, yeah, so as far as friends go and stuff like that, I, I always try to make sure what's... In, as Alicia Keys said, what's really real 
is real. So I try to make sure I keep honest people around me and people, even though I don't, even when I don't want to hear it, you know, tell me the truth. I don't need anybody who's fake or feels like that they have to hang out with me um, as a pity. You know, I've had some friends that I felt that have done that, like, okay, you're only hanging out with me because you feel like you have to take me out. You feel like you have to do things, you know? I'm nobody's second choice, boyfriend, girlfriend, friend, whatever. I don't play second to anyone. Never have, never will. Not even at my worst moment. And the people behind the scenes, we don't play second to each other. We don't. We'll drop everything, you know, hey, call me, text me, what's going on? We listen to each other. You know, even though we may not agree, I'm going to listen to you, and then I'm going to give you the real. Just like my friends would do me. No, nah, you was wrong on that. Okay. You know, so I just appreciate them a lot. And because of them, I guess I could dedicate this video to my friends, but because of them, um, like I said, I'm trying out the video thing. Um, I've been cooking a lot lately, a whole lot. I just haven't really posted it because um, the way my kitchen is set up is hard to do it with an iPad. You know, and you guys see a lot of uh, food popping up here and there and oh my God, that looks so good. You should do, I do want to do videos with food and drinks. But like I said, once I get the camera, then it'll be a little bit better because then I could go outside, take pictures outside. You know, if I'm at the pool, if I go out with my friends here, I could do more videos and stuff like that versus the iPad because I don't, I'm sorry. I'm not one of them crazy people you see pulling out the iPad. Ooh, let me record. Fuck, I look like, you think I'm finna get hit over the head for my iPad? Please. It's always funny to me when I see people out with them iPads. That's a beautiful picture. Nah, fool, that's a way to get hit in the head. Come on, let's call a spade a spade. Even if you don't live in the hood, let's have some common sense. Because, mm -mm, not even in L.A. do fools pull out iPads and stuff. I'm good. Have some common sense, baby. But anyway, um, yeah, you'll see a lot more um, stuff with some of my friends. Um more food well not cereal not cereal unless it's those stupid cereal bars that my homegirl gave me that were so good i think they were like captain crunch or something oh my god they were amazing but i keep thinking that i want to make some um what do you call those things rice krispies treats but i want to make them with cheerios i want to make cheerio treats that's what i've been thinking about but yeah um Love my friends, love everything. Um, I, I appreciate them. And like I said, I hope um, there are other people that, that actually have friends that they could call on day or night, you know, hey, I got a problem. Because at the end of the day, everybody needs somebody. And sometimes blood ain't no thicker than water. You do need to have, if, if you don't have the perfect family, which I don't think anyone does, and if you feel like there's nobody that you can talk to, make sure at least the people you choose to call friends are actually friends because that that's something that could come back to haunt you it really can you know you should be able to share secrets and you know hey i'm sad i'm upset i don't care if it's a hundred million times a day a real friend even if they tired of listening to the crap they're gonna sit there and listen and try and help you help yourself because at the end of the day again nobody is completely alone and everybody needs somebody.